Okay, so we have these force. I haven't read this before. All I know right now is that William Carlos Williams, uh, a poet from New Jersey, he who's super famous in high school for the Red Wheelbarrow, uh, he wrote this short story uh, about basically going over to a relatively poor, I think, family uh, and having to treat their daughter and having to force this reluctant daughter to do some sort of treatment uh, at their house. So that kind of comes out in the title, The Use of Force. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, you can kind of imagine uh, that there's going to be some complications about using force. Uh, so that's what I'm imagining right now. Uh, and by the way, this is just some background detail, but you know, William Carlos Williams was also a doctor. Um, so this probably comes from just his his like like his observations from actual life as a doctor so i don't know i don't really have too much specific to really expect but what i can what i can say right now is just looking at the title right now uh it's clear that the idea of the force is the problem the problem that we should be focusing on so uh, it's a, it, there's going to be a little bit of that sort of philosophical bit. That is what I'm expecting. Okay, uh, it's my first time ever reading this, so we'll see what happens. All right, let's go. So this is not going to be perfect because on Kindle, at least I can show you where I'm looking. But this is a uh, pretty large, so I'll just follow along with me. I'll try to keep the area that I'm looking at in the middle like this. Okay, let's go. Olsen. I don't know the ethnic background of Olsen, so I don't really have a historical context right now. Please come down as soon as you can. My daughter is very sick. Uh, so I, had, I had read this before uh, on Google, but this the story doesn't use quotation marks, uh, so that's one automatically, immediately, like, uh, obvious literary feature that's kind of different from the way you would normally write. Please come down as soon as you can. My daughter is very sick. But, but it's, honestly, it's not that big of a deal. So they're talking, the dialogue is actually, there is that style of having no quotations has a very casual feel. So it is very damp here sometimes. Um, it makes it like the person is, the narrator is like talking to me, but then you realize actually it's the mom talking to the doctor. So it has a more casual storytelling feel, you know. Uh, but honestly, that's not something I would personally emphasize, like really notice other than if I had to like write a high school essay or something. <laughs> uh. I'm trying to figure out that's why they were spending $3 on me. Does that mean, that just means, ah, authority. I am spending $3 on you, so you tell me what I'm supposed to do or what's wrong with me, right? So it's kind of the authority uh, relationship here. I'm paying you for your expertise. So the, uh, yeah, you know, this is a little, already I'm getting the theme, uh, which is the use of force. And they weren't telling me any more than they had to. It was up to me to tell them. It was up to me to tell them. That's why they were spending $3 on me. Automatically, I already know now this is like, um, <laughs> 
this guy is uh, in Korean we call that konde, but this guy is already has that mentality. Like I, I'm gonna solve the problem. Okay, so this is going to lead towards that. Fairly eating me up, so he's a little unnerved. That's, okay, interesting phrase. As strong as a heifer in appearance. Interesting phrase. High fever. Magnificent blonde hair in profusion. Advertising leaflets. We're focusing on her beauty. Um, uh, okay, so why would we focus on the beauty? I guess I'm expecting, right? So there's going to be, there's, she has some strength. Okay, there's something on her side, and it's making him momentarily hesitant. So this is setting up like a battle. That's what I'm expecting anyway. We'll see. I mean, maybe her beauty just becomes this weird perverted thing. I don't freaking know, but we have to see what happens. Thought. <laughs> that is a totally different word these days. Um, as doctors often do, I took a trash. I wonder, maybe I'm reading too much into that, but yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit of that sleaziness as doctors often do you know just like um s s making himself sound like more like the doctor so i honestly I, I, there's not a lot to predict here other than i'm just waiting for the force The little girl's expression didn't change, nor did she move her eyes from my face. So there's a little bit of that creepiness. Uh, diphtheria, I don't know what that is. Okay, causing difficulty with breathing, it says. Thank you for note. Nothing doing. Oh, come on, I coaxed. Just open your mouth wide and let me take a look. Look, I said, opening both hands wide. I have anything in my hands. Just open up and let me see. Such a nice man, put in the mother. <laughs> look how kind he is to you. Come on, do what he tells you to do. He won't hurt you. So, so yes, yeah, so we're getting, <laughs> we're getting that, we're getting that tension right now. Ground my teeth in disgust. The word hurt. Okay. Well, that makes sense actually. And I'm still I'm still on this doctor's side. And well, the doctor seems like a reasonable person. <laughs> okay. Cat like movement. So I'm just noticing that some, the parents are embarrassed. Bad girl, okay. For heaven's sake, I broke in. Don't call me a nice man to her. So he's a, a little ups, so he's getting, um, He's getting a little uh, feisty with the parents. 
So that's him flexing his power. But now he's actually a little power. He's kind of powerless before the child. So there's that sort of interesting dynamic. Or shall we have to open it for you? Not a move. Even our expression hadn't changed. Okay, let's go. Then the battle. I said the word battle earlier. I had to do it. I had to have a throat culture for her own protection. It's a little on the nose, personally. I don't think, I feel like this is a little too straightforward, but okay. But first I told the parents that it was entirely up to them. I explained the danger, but I would not insist on a throat examination so long as they would, uh, sort of in our language, as long as they would, unless they would, unless they would take the responsibility. So basically, uh, asking permission, this is honestly as a Hagwon teacher, such a painful sentence. I will force the shit, <laughs> uh, this force this little shit to give me the information I need, uh, but I need your permission. Can I proceed with your child? And so, like, this happens so much in, in academics, um, in private education, you know, where the, where the teacher and the, and the, and the parents, like, like, team up on the kid. Uh, it's just, I feel, I feel kind of gross. I explained the danger, but I said, I would not insist on a throat examination so long as they would take the responsibility. If you don't do what the doctor says, you'll have to go to the hospital, the, mo uh, the mother monitors her severely. <laughs> oh, yeah? I had to smile to myself. I had already fallen in love with the savage brat. The parents were contemptible to me. Interesting, crazy sentence. It just... It got a little weird, it's a little weird, it's a little twisted, it's a little strange to me, okay? But now I'm actually excited about this story. Before this, it was just all just sort of pointing at one direction, the use of force, you know, so I'm gonna come in and force this kid. But now I had already fallen in love with the savage brats. The parents were contemptible to me. Why would the parents be contemptible? Because they're sort of uh, bowing to authority and, and this guy likes someone who is sort of rebellious, who's a little, um, like kind of set in her own ways, something like that, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. So why are the parents contemptible and why does he love the kid, the kid that's not um, complying? I'm just uh, going to keep reading, but I think that's going to be an ongoing question in my head. While she surely rose to magnificent heights of insane fury of effort, bred of her terror of me. <laughs> uh, uh, that's the most literary we've sounded so far. You know, previously in this in this passage, we haven't sounded that literary. It's like Moby Dick, except it's a little girl. His shame, his dread, till I want to kill him. Though he was almost fainting. So yeah, he the doctor kind of hates the weakness of the parents. So I was kind of, you know, my prediction was more or less right. Don't, you're hurting me. Let go of my hands. <laughs> okay. Stop it, stop it, you're killing me. Do you want her to die of diphtheria? Do you want her to get into only UCLA? <laughs> just kidding. Just, uh, just how one, just how one life. <laughs> Come on now, hold her.
the wooden spatula behind the last teeth. So this is pretty violent, man. When you're when a child is not wanting to do anything. And you're sticking a wooden spatula into the mouth. Ugh. <laughs> if if you watch this on a movie screen, this would be very uncomfortable. Like near like torture uncomfortable, I think. She reduced it to splinters. Oof. Why aren't you ashamed to act like that? The child's mouth is already bleeding. Her tongue was cut. Perhaps I should have desist desisted. Desisted. Perhaps I should have desisted and come back in an hour or more. No doubt it would have been better. But I've seen at least two children lying dead in bed of neglect in such cases. But the worst of it was, right, I, that felt like a little excuse, honestly, because, right, this comes out now. But the worst of it was that I too had gotten beyond reason. I could have torn the face, child apart in my own fury and enjoyed it. It was a pleasure to attack her. My face was burning with it. This is a little bit of a perverted, kind of a twisted story. It's enjoying this Oh my god, the ending is coming? Holy sh... <laughs> the damned little brand must be protected against their own idiocy. One says to oneself at such times... So this is him... Um, this is... There's a little bit of uh, irony, right? There's that, there's that gap between what he's feeling and what he's aware that he's not really feeling. So... His, his, his purported, right, his, uh, his ostensible reason is, oh yeah, she must be protected against her own industry. She doesn't know anything better. So I'm going to force her to give me the sample. Uh, but then the one says to oneself at such times, this is the, like, putting a, like a, putting a lamp on it. It's like showing that we're aware that this is the kind of thing you normally say to yourself, like a justification. So, yeah, that one, those what, those eight words or so, that those eight words are doing a lot, man. Others must be protecting it. It is a social necessity, and all these things are true, but a blind fury, a feeling of adult shame, bred of a longing for muscular re release are the operatives. He hates the adult shame. These moms and dads and he himself, right? Being bound by shame. He wants to just have muscular release, which honestly has this kind of nasty little, like almost sexual uh, undertone. <laughs> One goes on to the end. So we're getting close, right? We're, we're getting away from these adult feelings and thoughts we're trying to go towards these like sort of primal muscular fury like more body embodied things uh in a final unreasoning no brains no thoughts assault i overpowered the child's neck and jaws i forced the spoon back of her teeth and down her throat till she gagged which you know a uh covid aside that's getting nastily sexual and there was both tonsils covered with membrane she had fought valiantly to keep me from knowing her secret she had been hiding that sore throat for three days at least and lying to her parents in order to escape just such an outcome as this now she was truly furious truly she was furious she had been on the defense before but now she attacked Oh, that's a, you know, that's a, honestly, I, I feel sick. <laughs> I don't feel good, man.
<laughs> so the story theme is not hard whatsoever. The language, the language is efficient, you know, it, uh, it doesn't get too fancy, uh, except for that one time. It's very much in the doctor's perspective, and his sort of kind of messed up, twisted psyche. He's also self-justifying. So I feel personally a little gross. At the end, the very final scene is her kind of putting up her, the defense that, or like the, not defense, because it's already past defense, right? But putting up the sort of rebellion that she can after she's already been subdued. So yeah, I see, I see some allegories here. Uh, yeah, I mean, just to get it out there, it's like a rape. It's like a rape. We started with the beauty. We stick that spoon in her in her throat, and she is she is uh, tears of defeat. She's she's <laughs> she's defeated. Ugh. Ugly, ugly. Hard to read, honestly. By the end. All right, that was that story.